Welcome to the Dairy Industry Careers Panel. Um, it's part of the Excited for Careers in Agriculture project uh, being run by CQ University. Um, that, my name is Amy McCosker. That is who I work for in the Agritech Education and Extension team. So uh, this part of the project is run, of course, um, in conjunction with the dairy industry and with Gipps Dairy. Um, but the Excited project in general is being run across many different industries um, with many different industry partners. And if you wanted um, any information on the Excited for Careers project or any of the other projects we run, you can find that at our, our website, which you can see listed just there, agritech uh, sorry, agri-techeducation.com. And today's uh, presentation is being done in a webinar format, so we won't be able to actually take um, Q&As verbally from people. We'll just ask you to put them in the chat or Q&A box, um, type them into those and send them off, and I'll um, make sure that we ask our presenters those. And please feel free to interrupt with questions throughout the presentation so we can make sure that we're keeping um, what we're talking about nice and relevant to those people that have been able to attend today. And, um, yeah, so we'd love to, to hear as many questions as we can. Okay, housekeeping out of the way. Let's uh, jump in and meet our panelists for today. Uh, let's start with Veronica McLeod. Veronica, you're the um, regional project lead in workforce attraction with Gipps Dairy and Dairy Australia. That's quite a long title. So could you break it down for us and explain um, what, what you do? Um, yeah, so this is a two-year project that started um, at the back end of last year in workforce attraction. So um, I started in January. I took over from a previous colleague of mine. Um, so I work with the schools, the employment agencies, the TAFEs, um, job seekers, um, promoting all careers in dairy. So from farm gate to service provider to everywhere in between and helping um, with any education needs and things like that like upskilling staff um, with some different projects, um, making sure our teachers and careers advisors know what the different options are within dairy careers so that they've got the right information to um, go to the students about if they are looking for a career in dairy. Great. And what was your pathway to get to, to, where, you, to where you are today? Um, so I grew up on the dairy farm in Gippsland um, down in Mafra when I was a teenager. I've been away for... 25 years um, so when um, I was in I've been in dairy all my life so I worked on the dairy farm with my husband after we got married and um, then we moved into service provider roles so from selling semen to AI and cows to freeze branding cows to selling stock feed microbiological feed supplements um, and now I'm in the um, workforce space. So I've always had a passion for career in dairy um, and I think it's just been an awesome career for me and I'd really like to help shape the future of careers in dairy for people coming into the industry moving forward. So Yeah, it's interesting. We'll talk about this in a bit, but you've obviously come in at lots of different angles, like there's not one one path through. Let's Correct. move on to you, James. You're, you are the um, regional manager for TTMI in southwest Victoria. So yeah. just for those listening, tell us a bit about what you do at TTMI and um, and what the business is. So TTMI is a, um, a sales, service and spare parts um, business. Um, we started, um, you know, in the early 1970s over in Trafalgar and it just branched out, um, you know, over the state, um, over Victoria, and we now have two dealerships in Tasmania. And what we do is we, um, we firstly sort of, uh, we work out what problems we're trying to solve on the farm. Um, we talk to um, to dairy farms and, and beef uh, as well, predominantly in our area, um, and some cropping. Um, we really try and just uh, work out what they're what they're trying to do, what their goals are, and we work out a, a plan for machinery. Um, to um, to facilitate that on their farm, you know, um, so everything from um, say tractors, uh, quad bikes, and precision precision um, agriculture as well. So all the GPS technology. So we're, we're kind of all over that as well. Um, uh, and we also we have a hand in um, a little bit of education side as well. We have um, seven branches, and we put on um, a holy for first year apprentices this year. And we do school-based apprenticeships as well, so we're quite active within our within our area, also, um, which gets us quite active in the dairy community too, because it's um, you know, we have one of the um, most 
but in, 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 in over our way anyway, which it's basically mainly dairy. Um, yeah. Hmm. And how did you get into the position you're in? Did you do any um, any study or any sort of were you were you gunning for this role or it's something that presented itself yeah, after um, a career? Um, not particularly. I started off in uh, I did an apprenticeship as a mechanic um, after leaving school. Um, we have a family farm, which is just a, basically a beef um, fattening paddock, really. So nothing major. It's not you know, doesn't really pay the bills. Um, but uh, yeah, so started off as a mechanic, did my apprenticeship there, um, worked my way through the workshop system um, towards sort of leading hand and foreman. Um, I took a break out of the industry for a while and went and worked in the horticultural space. So I was over um, in a, a production nursery, um, growing Australian natives and things like that and grafting and that sort of thing. And I, I, did, um, I did a mature age apprenticeship uh, as well. And um, while I was doing that, I, was, I did some business studies too. So, um, you know, it was sort of invigorating to, to be out of the, uh, the the trade for a little bit. But then uh, my business studies brought me back. Um, so I took into some service management roles. So looking after the, the, the workshop, um, workshop flow and that sort of thing. Um, and then um, when I worked over in Papua New Guinea, doing a similar role for, for three years. And then when I came back to Australia, it was in a sales role. So I kind of covered all the bases that, um, that, that are in a dealership um, and then ended up yeah, as, as um, sales manager and then regional manager for Southwest Big. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so similar to Veronica, you've obviously worked in and around the, the ag industries in lots of different yeah. ways, but always sticking yeah. to that sort of ag focus. Yeah. Mm. Great. And we're getting closer and closer, I suppose, to the to the farmer. And we'd be remiss today to do a webinar about careers in dairy without having a farmer on our um, on our panel. Rose Atherton is a dairy farmer from Druin, and she joins us this afternoon as well. Rose, tell us a bit about your farm and, and what you guys do there at Druin. Um, right. Yeah, Rose. Um, basically, we have a four, nearly 400 cow herd here. Uh, we own 555 acres. We've been farming on this property for 40 years. I'm originally from New Zealand. Um, and a quick story, I actually got offered an exchange um, to come out through a scholarship and actually travelled around Victoria for 10 weeks and had 18 different host families in that time. Uh, I was also at that time actually working in town in New Zealand as a receptionist typist come bookshop manager and wanted to get back out into the dairy industry. But unfortunately in New Zealand, it's too small. Um, so while I was over here on my exchange, I actually got offered a job um, as just packing AI tanks um, and sort of, yeah, moved over for six months and it ended up being full time. Uh, long story short, I'm now married with four kids and run the family farm here. And last May, we just put in five automatic uh, robots uh, to milk the cows. And we carve all year round. Right. So there's, there's plenty happening on your farm, it sounds like, all year round. And as you sort of were getting to at the end there, technology is becoming more and more a part of your business. Is that, is that influencing the type of people that you're employing? Oh, definitely. But we've always been in the case of, if anyone wants to have a go, we'll train them. Where unfortunately, some farmers want those people that have already got their certificate and knowledge. Um, where we don't care if they're willing to learn, we will teach them from the basics. Um, but with the technology now, uh, we've got an automatic calf feeder, which we've had in since, since 2006. Um, and so it's all about the technology driven. And, you know, there's so many courses through Gibbs Dairy and your local TAFEs that the kids can get involved with. It's just, honestly, I'd like to be a kid again because there's so many more pathways opened up for people in dairy. Mm. And that links well back to, to you there, Veronica. So there's lots of pathways that are set up by Gipps Dairy. Would you say that industry is really looking for mostly people directly out of school with a grade 12 certificate or are we looking for TAFE-based um, certificates or you know is there a high demand for people who have done that further education where is where uh, are those positions um to be honest there's probably a fair mix in that category so 
we um we are promoting a lot in schools at the moment from a perspective of starting the students with a, a work experience to see if career in dairy is something that they want to do whether it being on the farm or in a service provider role um, that then hopefully leads into a structured workplace learning which is one day a week um, that could end up and then progress into an apprenticeship or a traineeship and then they can go through TAFE and get fully qualified if they'd like. Um, it's not an industry that you have to be dead set accredited in if like the learning structure from a um, you know an, an academic level is not your your thing at the end of the day as Rose said farmers will train you to the way they want things done um, we run extension events at Gipps Dairy so then it's a lot of hands-on and verbal learning and um, that people can come along and learn the the benefits of you know our, like our cups on cups off course or um, which is all about mastitis management the correct way to milk the cows and things like that so then they get a certificate at the end to say they've done the course um, and so some of our online learning that is our fundamentals that you know, is free for people to do it starts at the basics like stock handling or farm safety and then if the I've had some students in the last school holidays that you know, had filled out an expression of interest form at a local careers expo I went to and they said they'd like to do some school holiday work and things like that. And I said to them, would you be interested in doing some basic online learning so that it shows initiative to the farmers that you're ready and you're keen and they all jumped at the chance. So that basic learning and then it proves to them they've put on their resume to the farmer, they're willing to have a go. And that's realistically, most farmers are, are pretty well um, happy to give anybody a go as long as they're reliable, they show up um, and they give it a go. Um, so then they'll learn as they go. Then there is the opportunities to move into different things like business management, farm management, um, oh and all of the stuff that you need in most careers you need as, as careers in dairy, from marketing people to sales people to farm workers, farm managers, everything. The list is just absolutely endless. And there's the demand there, Veronica, there's the need for more people. Yeah, correct. And, and I think farmers have, have realised that at, at the moment there's not the dead set ready to go skilled farm workers. Um, and that's why they are pretty much open. I've got a list of farmers that are happy to take students for work experience or structured workplace learning to give them the opportunity to try it and see if it's something that they like. And then they can set up an arrangement from there. Um, there's also, you know, I've got some students that are work, just working on a farm that have left school, but still want to train as a diesel mechanic, say. So they'll do a diesel mechanic apprenticeship through the TAFE while they're working on the farm. So they still need to know how to fix the tractor on the farm. So the diesel mechanic still comes into play there. Um, they still can do an accounting course while they're working on the farm. They need to know how to do the accounts or business management and things like that. So they're realistically getting two trades at once. Mm. And James, you've had a, a huge amount of um, experience in that in that TAFE training space, both personally and, and sounds like recently professionally as well with all those first year apprentices that you've brought on. Um, are you finding that there's lo there's lots of students looking to take up those positions in those TAFE in those TAFE opportunities? Yeah, there are, and um, as as was said earlier, there, there are so many opportunities now um, for, for people. Um, you know, you can try your hand at something while you're studying. You know, there's, there's there's plenty of room to move, and we do see a lot of people who who come in and do a diesel apprenticeship, and they may you know stay on as qualified uh, and go back to the, the the family farm or back to farming after um, you know a couple of years of working in in a, in a space with us. They'll they'll head back and they'll and then and in that time where they've become you know qualified um, heavy diesel, they're also uh, working um, you know on the dairy too. So they've uh, they've done things that all the facets that comes from running a dairy, all the accounting and uh, and crop management and and you know everything that goes with it, they kind of become a, a jack of all trades and and usually get to master them, which is which is really good. So. There's plenty of areas to focus, um, you know, your attention to. It, it, just depending on what kind of personality you have, there's, there's lots of different areas for you to be comfortable in. And as an employer, um, you know, what what sort of resumes are getting you, I guess, excited? Like what, what sort of skills do you want to see? What sort of initiative do you want to see kids showing? Like uh, Veronica mentioned, you know, the people that put on, that go ahead and do a bit of training before they start applying for jobs, show that um, they're really keen. 
Yeah, so um, we've we've got a, a really good. Um, we work we work closely closely with the TAFEs and and some of the high schools as well. So we may put on someone as um, like a, they come in once a week and do a course through their high school, um, and we work with them on that. And then you know um, they go in and do a pre apprenticeship course. And then they come and sign on as an apprentice, so they get plenty of time for um, to get to know us, and, and likewise we get to know them. Um, so there's that stream as well as as, as resumes coming through. Um, and yeah, if anyone's got any prior training, it really does put them above. Um, you know, a go, they go into a different different basket. You know, we sort of we go through those. Uh, it, it's got uh, there's a lot of um, strong messages in there that, they, that they're keen if they've done a certificate two or something. It just shows that, yep, they've made a decision to want to do this. Uh, they've studied it and now they want to take a next step, um, you know. So, yeah, that's um, it's, there's some really good talent coming through, you know, some keen people. Yeah, that's great. And Veronica, you wanted to add to that? Yeah, just from um, a conversation I had with some students um, by doing one of your programs the other week with one of your colleagues, you know, the skills that you learn even – in a, on a dairy farm or on a horticulture farm and things like that, um, most of them are transferable skills. So mm. it's it's a lot of stuff you can take from industry to industry. If you've done 10 years in the dairy and you decide that it's then horticulture or something else like a sales role and things like that, you've got so many skills that you take in to other areas and other industries as transferable skills. Mm. And and as James described in his career as well, he sort of had worked in other agricultural fields and, and came back to dairy. Uh, Rose, you had a comment that you'd like to make as well? Yeah, I was just going to say we had a work experience kid here through school uh, last year, two days a week, but he actually also used to milk when he was a bit younger as well and hung around the farm. So, you know, a city kid or a town kid, um, but he'd come out, but he's ended up working with us for two days a week last year, work experience, to actually left at the end of the year once school finished, went and worked for a um, contractor for the season, and now he's actually picked up a um, technician role um, for Laylee, um, which he's now doing TAFE through, but he's also getting two certificates but he, in the end, will be able to actually even maybe travel once he's got his qualifications underway. So there's huge opportunities out there for kids. Mm. And, yeah, it's, it's almost like shooting fish in a barrel, isn't it? If you're one of those people who is really, really keen, there's, there's just a world of opportunity there. The only limit is how, how keen you are to, to do the work and, and get in there. Now, Rose, we, we had a discussion earlier today on about um, technology and, and you, I know you guys are really keen um, and I've invested a lot in, um, in calf feeding and in um, different types of robotics on your farm. So you're obviously also looking for people with the, that sort of extended skill set, perhaps people that might be considering um, some sort of tertiary education. Is that, is that fair to say? Uh, yes, but no. Like, again, it's all with learning. Like, we can teach them on the job as well. Um, but yeah, like it, it, it's a matter of there's more and more of these robotics machines going to be going around because of the short time in labour. And unfortunately, let's be honest, the young ones don't honestly want to be in the shed for five hours of the morning and five hours a night just milking. They'd rather be doing the, I shouldn't say the glamorous stuff um, or sitting in the tractor with a GPS and driving around. So by going the robotics, it's helped us. But that technology we need those people too that can use computers that know how to read the reports and get the information out too. Um, so yes, it would be a benefit, but you know what I mean? Again, if they're willing to learn, we will help them through that. Through our projects at CQU, we've done um, research with students um, from all over Australia about uh, their perceptions about agriculture and, and the careers in agriculture. And we've found that um, the majority of students actually believe that the only jobs in agriculture uh, in the field are, you know, are out, you know, doing the milking or doing the hands-on work. So, so, so some of the things that we we try and discuss when we get to schools is about, you know, um, the, the transferable skills, of course, going across agriculture, but also going across sectors. So, you know, you might have gone to uni and studied something to do with, you know, something very science and technology based that might really focus on pure data and you might not realize there's a huge demand obviously in the dairy industry um, 
as people try and increase um, their ability to to um, produce, you know, the best dairy products in the world for that for that um, that data management as well. Now, James, you had something you'd like to say? Yeah, just just on that um, that uh, auto guidance data data management side of things, we there's two of our uh, salesmen actually who um, who sort of went that way when they're on the dairy farm themselves. They, they, they got really heavily into that sort of thing um, and have become really productive in our in our field, um, travelling uh, Victoria and Tasmania, uh, demonstrating and actually selling those products as well. Um, so while the dairy is always close to their heart, they've, uh, they've sort of found, found a little niche that came out of that and has got them, you know, doing a bit of travel and things like that too. So... Um, that was that's just another sort of avenue that, that, that popped into my mind. Then um, that this, there are just it, it is limitless, um, you know, for what you can do in the dairy industry. Um, it is such a changing space, and as as um, Asia um, develops a more westernised um, menu, I suppose um, milk and milk products are, are going to. They're just going to um, increase and increase is what we're going to have to produce in Australia to, to feed that that demand, and we're seeing that in a um, in a in equipment sales uh, side already that um, people are being needing to be more efficient um, at what they're producing um, and and just better at what they're doing. So it's a, it's quite a high tech um, game that we're in now, uh, you know, from what it was 30 years ago. And the word limitless is a great one, James. And it's something that I think, um, you know, as someone who's a bit further along in their career, looking um, looking at students now, I think anyone who enters in that tech space, that those roles are only going to get um, larger and larger, more and more oh, yeah. higher and, and higher paid. There, there, is, there is no more new land really being farmed. So we need to be better at farming our, our existing land. Um, there's so I heard some figure that there's every day there's another 220,000 people in existence that wasn't there the day before. So we're heading towards a 10 um, by 2050 is something that's going to be like 10 billion people, um, you know, globally. And, and we are uh, Australia and New Zealand that are the farms for our region, you know, and we've got a we've got an aim for quality. Um, mm. So we what we do is going to be in demand um, more and more. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. Mm, it's exciting. Yeah. And, Veronica, you had something you wanted to add there? Yeah, I have a couple of follow-on things from um, James. So travel definitely. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to travel overseas to see different dairying systems and things like that. Last year I got to travel to the um, Madison World Dairy Expo for the first time. Like, it's just amazing to see the new technologies there. It, our industry is an industry that certainly doesn't sit still. Um, there's, in my opinion and my words, I say to the students, there's always a shiny new tool in the toolbox. Um, so it's always something new to, to learn and, and, you know, take on. And there's different parts of it that you know, excite some people. And, you know, when genomics first came in, it was amazing to see from that perspective, the change and how we could run with it from, from a better genetics perspective and things like that. But the other thing is, as you touched on, Amy, you know, I, as I said, I've been doing a fair bit of work with your colleagues and research is a big field for us, you know, in the dairy industry. We do research at Dairy Australia to have the best practices possible for the next generations and to make sure we're doing everything as best we can from the farm, from the cows perspective and sustainability. Um, and even, you know, some of your colleagues are doing the research on, you know, how people learn the best and, and how they retain the information and all that sort of stuff. That's all going to help our jobs in the future. So, as much as there's, as I said before, there's marketing people and that sort of stuff. Your research people are just as, and your science techs and things like that are just as important in our industry. Certainly, yeah. As someone who was born and raised in central Queensland and studied journalism in Brisbane, I never could have imagined that I would be working with the dairy industry, for example. Um, but my experience through my career has just been that there's there's actually just more and more opportunities. Like you rarely get to a point in ag where you think like, well, I've reached the end of this road now. Like there's always another turn, another opportunity around the corner because as James mentioned, people need to eat more and more people every day. 
Um, and it's something I think that we learned during COVID, right, is how important um, food production is and how we want to make sure that food is produced as close to where we live as possible. Yeah, so my next question, I suppose, for you guys is to do with um, the teachers. And I think that um, predominantly that's who's joining us today and perhaps who'll access this resource in the future. Um, and what they could do to link the classroom to um, the industry in a real world sort of way that will help their students, um, you know, follow those pathways if that's what they choose to do. So maybe we'll start with you, Rose. What, do you often get contact from schools in your region or how would you like people to, to set up those relationships if they, if they would like to? Um, we don't really honestly have much. It's only through when my kids were doing ag that I've had contact with the school. But before that, um, and that's only our local school, we haven't really had contact through schools at all. It, or I've been the one ringing the schools to see if they had anyone that was interested even in the school holiday um, milkings or part-time jobs. But actually, there was no one, no one came back to say that they wanted to do that. So... I found that was, you know, we're the ones having to push to try to get people engaged. Mm. And I'll come to you last, Veronica, because I'd say that you've probably got a, a, a detailed plan on this. But from your end, James, obviously, these did you say those first year apprentices were school based or is yeah, that connection so there? There's, there's usually a couple of barriers to, to um, people starting to do something new is, uh, I guess, Fear of the unknown and change. So if they're coming out of school, it's a change. And the unknown side of it too, they're not from this industry. You know, so we need to break that down and make the, you know, the, that landing a bit softer um, for people. So it, the, the one day a week or the weekend or school holiday stuff seems to really um, get people who are interested who take a little bit of an extra nudge to actually do something to do it. And, and and come over the line, and um, you know, and and join us basically. Um, you know, so those those two things really change and the unknown. If you can break those two down, I find um, uh, people find themselves a bit more comfortable um, in in taking on a full time or more of a full time position if they've done something before. So yeah, that's something that we do through our high school base, and then we do um, through our apprenticeships as well. So you're not asking them to sort of sign their soul away on the first day, five days no, a week, not. 20 hours no, a so, And we do, have, um, we do have students that come through and they'll say, look, this isn't for me. I thought it was, but it's not, you know. And had they waited and, and, and signed up for an apprenticeship, uh, it would have been more difficult for, for everybody. But because they, they'd come in and they'd done, you know, a couple of months and go, you know what, it's not for me, I don't like it, um, they move on and find what their what their thing is, you know. And we've all that's something we all do, and we've all moved in our positions and, and, and careers to find what our thing is, and we all will continue to. And that's the great thing about this industry that we we've got the, the freedom to do that, um, and we should offer that to our, our students that come through too, you know. So um, convincing someone to stay doesn't work. Um, we move someone out the door, and someone else comes in, you know. And we um, you know we're happy to to work in that space until we find the right people all the right jobs. Mm, I think it can be pretty scary when you're 16, 17 years old and you feel like you're choosing the thing you have to do forever. It just, it feels like that, doesn't it? Mm. It feels like, you know, this is the rest of my life. But really you talk to anyone, you know, 40 and above and they've had five or six different types of jobs or different careers and they've they've used the skills they gained in in the first job um, almost to, to get trajectory and, and go around in orbit to the next one you know it's just it's, you just swing from one to the other using the skills you learn you know, especially in agriculture it's there's so much transferable skill you know um you know from farm to plate there's so much in the middle of that um it's uh, it, it it really is a, a good space to be in um if you want to uh, discover you know a bit about what you want to do Mm. So a pretty positive experience there from James, but it sounds like Rose had a bit more trouble connecting on that school level. Veronica, what, what are your sort of thoughts there? What would you say to, to teachers who or parents who are listening who want to get that experience for their students but aren't sure how to approach it? Um, so since I've 
come on board, I've been doing a lot of the careers expos um, and making myself known to the schools in our areas throughout Gippsland. Um, by being at the expos, I can give the teachers an information pack on different career options and pathways in dairies. So I've been able to quickly establish a, a relationship with a lot of our careers advisors locally, which has then sparked the question for them to shoot me an email or give me a call and say, hey, I've got this student that's thinking about this, you know, is there some work placement you can organise? And because I have the contact with the farmers and the service providers, I can make that call and say, look, you know, I've got some students looking to do some work experience and in these dates, can you facilitate it? And that's been working quite well. Naturally, there's barriers in and around transport and things like that. People have the perception that if you work on a dairy farm, it has to be at four and five o'clock in the morning, which is not necessarily the case at the moment. Like the likes of some of our farmers that have robot milkers don't necessarily need people there until nine o'clock and things like that. Um, so, but my biggest piece of advice is to ask the question and reach out. People in my roles um, across Australia, so we've got these roles across Australia at the moment. Um, if you are connected at all, go, and even if it's not my role, if it's your local Gipps Dairy office or, do you know what I mean, your regional extension office, most of the people there will be able to help. Um, the other thing is, is actually engaging in a conversation with the students and having the ability to have a, a conversation. They're not very um, conversationalist, most of them. Um, most, you do you know what I mean? Like you, you're an adult standing up there talking to them about a career that they don't really know much about. But having a little activity or a farm visit or something like that to break the ice and just being able to show them um, that there is lots of different pathways and it's not the perception that they think. Um, my role at the moment is to help the, the careers advisors, the, the parents and, and as well as the students understand the different types and roles there are available um, and things like that. So yeah, there is, there is lots of options. A lot of farmers don't know where to go to look for staff and vice versa. The teachers didn't know how to approach a farmer or the students certainly don't, unless they might be their neighbour or a friend and things like that. I hear multiple stories about students that say they've got, they live on a dairy farm, but their friends come and milk with them on the weekends because they're staying at the farm with, you know, having a sleepover, but they're out milking the cows because their, fr their friend has got chores to do on the farm. So do you know what I mean? It's still giving them... Um, some experience and things like that. So mm. lots of different ways. Mm, for sure. Now we have um, some people listening live today and we'd really love to take some questions from the audience. So if anyone out there, um, if you've got something that you'd like to say, a question or a comment or a topic you'd like for us to discuss, please just type it into the chat or the Q&A function and I'll ask our panellists. We'd love to hear um, from you guys today and get some some audience interaction. Now, one of my notes um, that I took to ask you guys about was career progression. Um, obviously, within organisations like Dairy Australia or like at TTMI, there's usually a structure that's pretty clear um, for people to look at from the outside and think, well, you know, if I start here, I can do this. Um, obviously, family farms like yours, Rose, are a little bit different. So how do you um, approach that, I suppose, um, with um, employees that are, that are coming on board? What sort of things could they look forward to in terms of um, um, you know, progressing through their career if they if they come to you straight out of school um, and, and are hoping to rise the ranks. Obviously, it's different in a family business. Well, yes, it is, but also no, because once they come from school, if they're doing the certificate and then they work through, there's that stepping stone. And, like, if we have one lady who was actually from a military background, so had no idea about dairy, um, and she's now milking for us. But, you know, her end goal was actually managing a farm. So she's building her skill set to all the way through. Um, you know, she's doing all these courses and, you know, she's running our 200 cow farm up at Darnham where we lease. Um, and she's only 21 year old. So, but again, she's passionate. She loves the animals. So there are so many different opportunities, again, for share farming. Um, you know, it's getting a little bit harder these days to actually buy a farm because of the land price and what you have to come up with. But there are options out there. It depends on where your goal or where you want to drive to to get to in the end. Did you have something you wanted to add there, Veronica? 
Yeah, I do. I actually, um, I do fully agree with Rose in a sense of, um, do you know what I mean? Their equity growth can be, can start to happen from the day they start working on the farm if that's what they choose. Um, do you know what I mean? As Rose said, they show enough initiative and things like that. They can become, you know, an, a, an equity share in the in the business or they could be a share farmer and or move into leasing a property and things like that. Um, I had a farmer say to me the other day, young ones don't realise that there, there is money to be made um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, 50 years worth it before they make some money. They can if they really want to have a go um, and show some initiative and things like that, they can start their equity growth from day one on a farm um, in the right arrangement. So do you know what I mean? It, if it's, or even if it's not investing on the farm to start with, then it's investing in investment property, which is still in, do you know what I mean? Equity growth and that sort of stuff. So lots and lots mm. of different options. Yep. Yeah, I think those of us that went straight from school to study for a long time, that that equity growth, I mean, it was going backwards for many years before it started going forwards again. So in some ways, getting straight out in the workforce, you're, you're a step ahead of lots of other people, that's for sure. So um, if we don't get any questions from the audience, we might start to wrap up and um, and just give a few final thoughts. I was wondering if we could just go around and just say, um, I guess, standing here today, how, what, what you would do if you were, you know, at school in grade 11 or 12 and looking at, you know, the next few years of your life, what sort of pathway you might consider, um, you know, with all of the knowledge that you have now, um, you know, what I, I think maybe I, I might be going into that tech field. I think, I think I can see that growing um, rapidly. It's a really exciting space. Um, and I think there's always going to be uh, more and more jobs, obviously jobs that we probably don't even know about yet uh, are emerging um, in the industry. So we'll start with you, James. What do you think? Well, I think you're right um, in saying that a lot of the jobs that people will have in the next 10, 15 years don't exist right now. Um, and if you're in this space, you, you're in the box seat to get those jobs, um, and those jobs are going to be stable. Uh, in a world going forward, um, stability might not be something that a lot have the luxury of, but in our industry, people need what we do um, as much as any other industry, I would think, but uh, people will really need what we do, and our industry is growing as well, to say, if, we, if we're going to be... Asia's food bowl, it's going to grow. Um, and the technology is going to grow. Um, and wherever you wherever you start um, in, in this industry, um, there's no telling where you're going to end in it. Um, there's going to be that much opportunity um, that the, the greater population just won't have um, for that stability and that amount of um, technical change that's going to come. So, yeah. Great. And what about you, Veronica? What would you do? Um, if you had the time again, if you were back at that sort of beginning of your career with all that excitement and enthusiasm, um, what, what first step would you take? Um, I don't know that I would really change much along my journey um, because I've enjoyed every, every learning aspect that I've had from day one, from, you know, carting hay after school and feeding calves and milking cows and things like that. I wouldn't change any of it for the world. Um, and even us being on the dairy farm taught our kids good work ethic as much as they're not dairy farmers one's a chef um, and things like that and one's studying a science at university and another one's doing an apprenticeship in in um, Fitter and Turner but at the end of the day all people that we're going to need within the industry at some stage um, but so I wouldn't necessarily change my pathway um, what I am really happy to see is lots of different stepping stones for students. Like even at the moment, there's the Ag Career Start. So there's a gap year program that students and farmers can apply. The farmer can apply to be a mentor. The student can apply to be, you know, work for six to 12 months in a gap year program and, and give the working environment a go before they go off to uni and really fully decide on what they want to do. You know, to just have great mentors within our industry. Um, you know, we have a young dairy network where they people from 18 to 35 can get together and share, uh, share stories, share abilities, share mentoring and things like that, which is when I first started out, we didn't have. 
but I was a, a pretty big advocate to get it up and running and I was a coordinator for a while in Western districts when it first started. So those sorts of things, we have a big women in dairy program. Um, do you know what I mean? Promoting um, that women do hold some of our major roles within the dairy industry. And it is really good to see a lot of the expression of interest forms I get are from young females wanting to get in and have a go. Um, when I started, it wasn't a female heavy um, industry, but now it is. Um, so we're probably nearly pretty much equal and it's great to see. So I wouldn't necessarily change my pathway. Um, what I'm really excited about is to help with some of the new um, formats of getting in or learning opportunities and things like that, that I can help with steering some of the, you know, the younger generation into doing moving forward in a career that I've loved all my life so great thanks for that and and Rose you you sort of touched on a little bit earlier about how um with land prices and things like that it's really difficult for young people to aspire to be a farmer themselves from the outset unless they've got some sort of family help um in there as well if they've got if it's a generational sort of farm but there are roads in so what would your advice be um to people who are um, you know, perhaps interested in, in pursuing that, um, you know, how, how would you tackle it? Well, I was just thinking, shit, I'd like to go back and be a kid again. Um, <laughs> because there's so many more options and there's so many more pathways than, than when I first started back in the, you know, when, you know, brought up in, on a farm over in New Zealand, you know, so I've born, been bred and born and worked on the farm swore black and blue that I was never going to marry a dairy farmer but you can't help who you fall in love with can you but in the other flip side as Veronica said it's a way a lifestyle to bring your kids up you know they will learn that work ethic you know that they, they don't they're very grateful um they see the hard work you do but at the end of the day they, they are getting the rewards as well um so again like Veronica I probably wouldn't change it because I love it I'm I i I am passionate about our dairy industry because if we don't have this and we have those people out there, what's going to happen? You know, we need to have a strong industry and with all the technology out there coming forward, I was at a day the other day and they said, okay, put your thinking caps on and this is more the technology and some of you will understand more than I do, but about the, the API or some little gadget technology um, you know, where where can you see the dairy industry in five years' time? That's what they want to actually start getting data and, and apps and things like that to help these younger generation because they don't want to do what we do. So there, there is so much opportunity. It's just a matter of getting it out there. And Veronica has been that in this area, um, in Gibbsland, being that ambassador, I suppose, and being that linking I shouldn't say Lincoln person, but she is, you know. That's a good plug for you there, Veronica. That's lovely. <laughs> oh, I think I've actually been nominated as the matchmaker in my office. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. That you need to have that you need those connections to join it all together. Otherwise it doesn't happen. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And I think the organisations that Veronica mentioned there um, were a great starting point. And I think that, yeah, you can't you can't do anything alone either. So that you can't really underestimate the value of of networking, and getting out to, to know people who, you know, are heading in the same direction as you or even better, someone who's already there who can could mentor you and, and share with you some of the, the things they've learned along the way. Well, thank you very much for your time, James, Veronica and Rose. Um, we really appreciate um, getting your insight into the careers in dairy, the many and varied um, opportunities that, um, that students uh, have to look forward to. And um, yeah, if anyone um, listening would like any more information um, on this project or on the careers in dairy or on any of the other projects that uh, CQU run, um, just head along to our, to our website and um, you'll find heaps of information there. So thanks again for your time, guys.